Good evening. 40 years after the Birmingham pub bombing, some of those who survived have been talking to ITV News Central about the emotional pain the tragedy still causes. Some relatives of the 21 people who died still cannot talk about the incident, which injured almost 200 people. On the eve of the bombings, our correspondent Keith Wilkinson has been speaking to a number of those caught up in the horrific events of November the 21st, 1974. Maureen Mitchell was 21 years old on a night out in the town when the bomb went off in the Mulberry Bush pub. She and her boyfriend, who she later married, were both terribly injured. 40 years on, she still finds it painful to talk about it. I had a piece of metal go through my hip and not in my bowels, so I was um, quite poorly for a while. I was in intensive care for five days, was given the last rites. Um, and my fiancé had quite bad leg injuries and a bad injury to his face. As they lifted me at, outside, I felt my actual tummy sort of, you know, was in a bad way. And I remember saying to him at the time, you know, if I die, remember I love you. So, yeah, I was aware that I might die. A former Birmingham policeman lost his brother, Jimmy Craig, in the pub bombings at the tavern in the town. It affected all of us. My mother suffered from depression for years, to be honest, before this incident. My dad was sort of in the same way. And to be honest, after all of this, the pressure I was under, I went the same way. In what way? I suffered from depression and anxiety as well. So what did that do to you? Just describe um, to me the sort of... It devastated me. It really, really did. I think probably for 10 years after that, I couldn't even talk about it. And if anybody was talking about it in the pub, I'd walk away. I couldn't even talk about it. I was absolutely devastated to think that anybody could do that. Pauline Heenahan counts herself as one of the lucky ones. As a hairdresser working at a college in the city centre, she was due to be in the Mulberry Bush with friends at the time the bomb went off. Thankfully, fate delayed them. We took on an extra perm late. Oh, we was we was there a good bit later, a good hour and a half later than we should have been. And then we heard this massive explosion, which we thought was a gas explosion, and all the lights just went off in the college. But we managed to get finished up and got everybody out. And then we went down for our usual drink at the Mulberry Bush, and that's where we seen everything that had happened then. It was absolutely terrible, because everything was in darkness, all town, all the lights had gone off and everything. Um, by that time, the fire engines and police were all there, and they was bringing people out in sheets, bodies, and it was, it was horrendous. It was terrible, terrible. Yeah. And what did that do to you? Oh, gosh. I was thinking I was in shock at first. The realisation didn't come in until next day and I just spent a week crying. It was awful, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Pop musician Phil Pickett and his then girlfriend Anne were also among the lucky ones. They'd just got off their motorbike at the entrance to New Street Station when they were hit by the blast from one of the bombs. But we were just going past the rotunda and just going into the station and I took my helmet off when there was just this terrific boom, the, the, the loudest sound, but it just moved us straight into the forecourt and through the doors, which we mm. luckily opened. Um, but you could feel the air it was just, move. It was, it was so, I'd still got my crash helmet on, hadn't yeah, I? Yeah. But this led to your injury that you yeah. had, didn't it? And the, the police were, they just seemed to be there almost immediately and just moving everybody onto trains. There was, we're not in the days of mobile phones where people communicated, so nobody actually really got the gist of, they knew it was something major. Mm. But um, we were on the train um, and I could see people sort of talking, but it was just so surreal and silent. Mm. And I touched my ears and they were bleeding. Come on. 
Phil Pickett went on to join the band Culture Club with Boy George and wrote the global hit Karma Chameleon. He also married Anne and in a terrible coincidence there was another bombing tragedy on their wedding day in London. The Hilton was bombed by the IRA as they headed to the register office close by. Park Lane, lunchtime. Will you please get away from those windows? Get away from the windows and off the balconies on the end of the hotel. You count your blessings, you just think, yes, this... I'm very fortunate, you know, and it does give you a different view on life. I mean, I, I always remember the person in the Hilton bombing was killed. Mm. And, you know, just uh, remember them on my anniversary. Yeah, you do. You, those mm. things stay with you. For so many people, especially now, at the 40th anniversary, memories of the Birmingham pub bombings will never fade. Keith Wilkinson, ITV News. And we'll have more on the 40th anniversary of the bombings on tomorrow night's programme. Two men suspected of murder in Belgium have been arrested in Coventry. Belgian police have been investigating the murder of a 49-year-old man from Coventry to holiday home in Moerstraat in August. The suspects, who are both in their 20s, will be extradited to Belgium to be formally interviewed. Six teenagers are among a group of people who have been arrested on suspicion of the manslaughter of a 75-year-old man in Warwick. The pensioner collapsed and later died in hospital after what police called was a verbal altercation. He was found near his home in Pickard Street on Tuesday night. Seven people in total were arrested this morning in connection with the investigation. The man's next of kin have been informed. Around 100 firefighters were involved in tackling a fire at an industrial unit in Bilston in the Black Country. The fire broke out at around 2 o'clock this morning and affected seven firms based in five large units. Investigations are continuing into the cause of the fire. Several firms were forced to shut. Police have released sketches of a man they want to speak to after the attempted abduction of a schoolgirl in Shirley in Solihull. The man who had a distinctive mark in his hand pulled up beside the girl in his silver car and tried to grab her hand, but she managed to escape. It happened in Clinton Road two weeks ago. Construction work on a major new office, technology and industrial park in Staffordshire is complete. The £40 million I-54 project is expected to create thousands of jobs. Work began at the site near the M54 in 2010 and it will open next month. Now one of Leicester's iconic toy shops is to reopen just over a year after it was forced to close. These were the scenes last September when Domino's shut down after it went into administration following heavy losses. But today it's been announced the toy seller is to get back up and running at Fenwick's department store. Great stuff. Now knowing how much you value local news, we've launched our very own app, giving you the news for free when you want it and where you want it. Bob Warman explains. Wherever you may be in the Midlands with the ITV News app, you can get the latest that's happening near you or you can find stories from any area across the country. You can also browse the homepage to bring you the day's big international, national and local stories. There's a live feature which keeps you up to date with all the news as it happens. Want to know what others are reading? You can follow the most popular stories in trending. And if you're interested in a specific story, star it and when there's a big development, you'll be updated automatically. Our app is also ideal for getting and sharing the latest news. That's the ITV News smartphone app, available to download for free now. OK, time for the weather now. Now with Janelle. <laughs> Wishing you a warm winter. Solar PV from Northern Gas Heating sponsors the ITV local weather. 
Hello, it's a cloudy and a dry night and fairly mild, well mild for nighttime temperatures anyway. We're looking at lows of around 5 Celsius. It's also very cloudy. We could see some mist patches beginning to form, perhaps even some fog over the hills. It's light winds tonight too. But tomorrow morning, expect that cloud to linger on and we can expect any mist or fog patches to stay with us for a little while. But by the afternoon, well, we are expecting some rain to arrive and that's because of a weather front that's pushing its way through. Highs of around 8 Celsius, but because of the rain and the strengthening winds, it won't feel that warm at all. Good night. Solar PV from Northern Gas Heating sponsors the ITV Local Weather. Well, that's it for tonight. There's plenty more on our website, but for now, for myself and the late team here, have a lovely evening and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.